trying to outthink my old previous self. I'm trying to outthink my ego self because my ego self wants to just basically lift heavy weights, throw a ton of load around and get it done, get in and get out and basically have aggression and uh, and I don't think that's that that really serves a purpose. What's up governors, Coach Troy Brown, IFBB Pro, ApexPhysiques.ca, your go-to resource for physique transformation. We're about to train back today, I'm heading to the gym, been training clients all day, a little bit tired today, should you train if you're tired? Anyway, a pro is at their best regardless, you've got to get it done anyway, and that's my point today, is if you're training, right, it's nice to be up, right, when energy levels are optimal, you've got food in the system, you've had a good night's sleep, that's a bonus, right? But then there's days where you're not firing on all cylinders. You're a little bit tired. You've been working all day. Boss is on your back. You've been busy. Kids are driving you nuts. Mrs. has been driving you nuts. But you still got to get it done regardless. And I really believe that there's two types of training. You've got energy reserves when you can really push and lift heavier loads. And then there's days where you need to back off. So it's really being intelligent. And I always think that back in the day when I was training as a pro bodybuilder, it was more about being outworking everybody in the gym, outworking my competitors. Now what I realize, now being age 46, I'm trying to outthink my old previous self. I'm trying to outthink my ego self, because my ego self wants to just basically lift heavy weights, throw a ton of load around, and get it done, get in and get out, and basically have aggression and uh, and I don't think that's, that that really serves a purpose, especially doing this for a long time. You know, bodies had a lot more wear and tear. So we're gonna train back. I'm probably gonna do, I don't know, maybe four movements, five movements max. Gonna keep the volume very low today. Um, and then saying that, if I feel as though once I get going, my energy levels pick up, then I probably will step on the gas and maybe do a few sets to failure. But anyway, I'm going to try and have a good workout. I'm going to get mentally prepared. I'm going to take probably three or four minutes, sit in the car, pound out some tunes, bust some house music, get myself in the zone, even though I'm really tired today working with clients all day. Anyway, let's get this done. This is how it's done, governor. Okay, governors, we are back with, again, we're doing more rear delts. Like Dorian Yates, love doing rear delts with back. I think they complement one another. I think the weakest link to most shoulder issues are the posterior delts, hence why I'll do them anywhere between two to three times per week. Very minimal weight. Check out my opposite hand. It's actually stabilizing the cable machine to stop it from moving. I actually saw um, Chris Bumstead do this the other day. Kind of makes sense. So to stabilize the machine with the opposite hand, and now you can concentrate on activating that posterior delt. Notice I'm using a pronated grip and I'm using a D handle. And then I'll switch to the other side. And my range isn't that big, really, um, due to, as you already know, I mentioned it on lots of videos that I've got tight delts, tight shoulders in both of them due to um, all the heavy training I did over the years. So the shoulders are pretty banged up. So we're just focusing on using light loads, high repetitions, and um, really focusing on getting the weight away from the body, driving my elbow back. I learned this from... Um, can't remember the guy's name, Eric. He'd done a lot of videos with um, Dorian Hamilton. And he's one of the trainers at Pure Muscle and Fitness. And he taught me about leading with the elbow on posterior delt. Kind of makes sense. Anyway, we're going to start the back workout. We pre-exhaust as always. I don't have a our gym that we train at here out in Collingwood in Ontario. There's no pullover machine. So I'll just use a um, dual two rope attachment and then do it on the cable machine kneeling fashion. I like kneeling. I find that I can stabilize better and I can't use my legs. Hence the reason for using my knees. Using two rope attachments and then driving these handles out. Uh, by the way, when I do the rear delts, I usually do about three sets of 15 reps on each side. Here I do about uh, two warm-up sets and then one set to, I would say, almost muscular failure here. Muscular failure for me is when form breaks down, when my spine starts to round at the thoracic area. Using a decent load here, trying to drive my hands outwards, flaring the handles at that bottom position. Uh, and that's a maximum set there. Uh, and then I move on to one of my personal favorite upper back exercise many people think that the lat pull down is a lat exercise 
I actually don't think it's a lat exercise. I think it's an upper back movement. Uh, this one is a modified exercise for the upper back. I learned this years ago, 1999, watching Charles Glass train Flex Wheeler and Chris Cormier. And they were six weeks out of the Olympia. And I watched them and they did this exercise. I'm using a neutral grip here. The neutral handle, the semi-neutral handle attachment, which I absolutely love. I don't like a wide grip. I think wide grip pull downs don't do nothing. Here, I love the elbow path. I usually do about 15 reps here. This is my last set. And I do about three sets, two warm-up sets. And then one set close to muscular failure. And when I get to the end... I will hold the isometric for about six seconds, as you can see there, um, anywhere between four and six seconds. And then we move on to um, old school movement that I used to do back in the day. Uh, I don't do the free bar anymore. It just doesn't fit my body anymore as I've gotten older. So I like to use the Smith machine. This Smith machine they got at this gym is actually pretty heavy. It gets very heavy in the bottom position on the negative. So I usually do a plate and then I'll go to a plate and a half and then I'll do uh, just over two plates to end on, on a heavy set. What I'm doing here is I'm using a two, two, one, zero cadence, which means two down, two second pause in the fully lengthened position and then one second driving the bar in towards my belly button. And this is more of a Yates row position, which I've always preferred in my in my career. And then next... Uh, I go a little bit heavier. just want to give you a different view here of what it looks like on the other side. Um, my feet are pressed into the ground. One thing I coach clients on is SSC, which means set up, stabilize, commence the movement. And here I'm just doing over two plates. And this, like I said, I don't use any wraps or any belt today. Um, the goal isn't to do super heavy weights today. Um, not feeling that strong. Not um, pretty tired from training clients all day. So you got to get it done regardless, trying to create as much my muscle connection and using that bent over position like Dorian Yates used to do in Blood and Guts. I uh, did about eight or nine reps there, and I'm going to move on to the next exercise. This is my uh, concluding set here. I've done two sets previously. This is my last set. I'm using a, I would say, a small attachment here, a uh, supinated grip. Um, this is targeting the lower lat, the iliac lat, Frustrates me when I see all these influencers on Instagram talking about the mid lat and the iliac lat and then the, the thoracic lat and the upper lat fibers. I'm just saying, I, I just like to lean forward, lock in my lats, and this is more of the horizontal position leaning forward, so I'm going to obviously hit the lower lat. This is great for anybody that has high lats. Um, to do things that are supinated grip will allow you to get more lats, especially in a lat pull down situation. Using an underhand grip will allow you to get your lats to hopefully somewhat hang. But that's my back. Very straightforward here. I'm just ending on a flurry. You're doing five fast reps here to finish. That's the end of the workout. Bob's your uncle. Okay, governors, as promised, I said I'll show you an old school back workout. This is from the Alberta days in Edmonton, the cold climate, bloody cold place. Wouldn't want, wouldn't want anyone to live there in the winter. <laughs> but anyway, we're doing pull-ups. Uh, I always started first, which was high pulls on the cable machine towards the chest. And we always started with, after that, we would do um, pull-ups. How I miss pull-ups. I haven't done them in years, obviously, due to the shoulders banged up. Love to do weighted pull-ups too. I remember Orville Burke, who was a Jamaican bodybuilder, pro. He used to do a lot of them too, weighted pull-ups. And I did them ever since. And I used to love the stretch on them because it felt like I was getting a phenomenal stretch in the lats. And if you want to get more lat recruitment in your pull-ups with a pronated grip, think about arching your back and you're trying to get your rib cage to the bar, so to speak. And this will allow you to recruit your lats in the pull-up position. And here I'm getting a few forced reps with my training partner at the time, who was Rob Shellafu, who was a Canadian light heavyweight national level bodybuilder, great guy. And also he was a Canadian wrestler, I believe, going by the name of Mr. Johnny Handsome. Great guy, miss him dearly. Anyway, next up, stable movement, bent over barbell rows, Yates style, 365 on the bar, just smashing them out, gritting my teeth, six to eight reps, hard and heavy. Not really worrying about form, so to speak. 
And then here we're doing an old school movement, T-bar row in the corner, or as Ronnie Coleman would say, T-bar row in the corner. And we're using 35 pound plates. We're probably using seven or eight plates there and hard and heavy. Form isn't that great, but who gives a shit? Pushing the feet into the ground, nice and stable, getting a nice pause in that stretch position there, which I really believe in. I know Jay Cutler used to do that too. And then we're ending on five plate uh, rack pull, hard and heavy, just getting it done. Six to eight reps, Bob's your uncle. That is it. That's the old school back workout. Probably weighing, as I mentioned, 260 to 265 here. Have a great day. Cheerio.